Hello everyone, I wanted to give an update because I know it's been a while since I made a video last. Um, so, um, a lot has happened since I have last uh, posted. Last time I was talking about uh, polycythemia, how I have a brittle bone disease, and um, how I have a disease that affects my collagen. Um, so, for anyone that doesn't know, um, my name is Michael DiPiori. I am 31 years old. Um, I suffer from a rare genetic uh, bone disease called osteogenesis imperfecta with vascular Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. Um, and then I have uh, polycythemia, secondary type, um, and so I just wanted to come on here and talk about a few things that I have learned, um, over the past couple months, um, with doing a whole bunch of testing, um, and I've been through, um, having to go through to a cardiologist because I was having some fluttering in my chest, as well as some chest pain, shortness of breath, and dizziness. Um, so I went to the cardiologist um, just to get my heart, heart checked. Um, and so anyways, to make a long story short, they ended up doing um, what's called um, just a regular TTE which is where they put the, the, uh, de the, what do they call that thing, the, the Doppler on your chest and up here too, to check your heart. Um, they also, um, made me wear this device, um, that I had to wear for like two weeks, um, and it monitored my, um, heart rhythm, my sinus, sinus rhythm to be exact. Um, and so, when it comes to, uh, well, I've also had, uh, uh, TEE, I'm going to get into that a little bit later, but, um, and an MRI of my brain, um, and seeing a neurologist regarding my nerve pain that I was describing in my previous videos about the pins and needles. So, when it comes to my heart, um, after do, making me wear that, uh, it's called a Zio device. Um, it came back, um, okay, normal sinus rhythm. Um, it, they did tell me when I had it on that if I felt weird, you know, or dizzy or lightheaded or shortness of breath, I would have to press the button and it would document it and record it. And then, um, so, and then I had a, a journal in my phone, because they have an app. I chose that option because um, I'm not good when it comes to writing, because I do have tremors in my hands. So my handwriting is really bad. Um, but um, I, I did journal about my um experiences what i went through and i noticed when i got with uh mid-afternoon i was getting a lot of symptoms uh shortness of breath um especially when laying down flat in bed um i would wake up gasping for air um so like I said, they did the uh, trans thoracic echocardiogram. Um, now, at the time, it showed um, that I was born with a left atrial appendage, um, which is located on the upper left chamber of my heart. Um, and then, trying to think. And then it showed um, that my aorta 
root was mildly enlarged. Um, the sinus of the Valsarva is what it's called. It was mildly enlarged. Um, but, uh, so fast forward to uh, the results um, of me um, going for the TEE, which is the trans esophageal echocardiogram. And that test is um, where they, it's basically like an upper endoscopy, in my opinion, because um, they have to stick a scope down your throat. But this time it's an ultrasound, it's not a camera. What it does is it's, uh, they put it all the way down your throat and then they stop midway in your esophagus um, to send sound waves, I guess, to get um, a better picture of the back of my heart since they couldn't really see um, a lot on the trans thoracic echocardiogram. Um, now, um, going back to the trans thoracic echocardiogram, before that I had seen the, the cardiologist for the first time I met him, and um, my heart rate was really, really elevated, bad. Um, he actually had to increase my blood pressure medication that I was started on um, back in December of 2022 um, due to anxiety. Originally, I was taking the, the uh, calcium channel blocker um, because I, I originally didn't think that I had a heart problem. So, um, I tell him my symptoms and so he, I originally was taking five milligrams of amlodipine um, and he increased it to 10 milligrams. Um, so, I was on that for a period of two weeks. Um, now, I have to back up because I forgot to also mention that I had to have um, a coronary um, CT angiogram, which is a CAT scan. Um, and you, they make you take this medication that lowers your heart rate because your heart rate has to be at a certain level in order for them to get a clearer picture of what's going on. And the good news is, is that my arteries are clear of any plaque or like calcium, um, I guess. But uh, it did show what it showed on the TTE, which is the mildly enlarged aorta root. Um, and that's when they recommended the trans thoracic echocardiogram. So anyways, I, um, a few weeks it took to get into that. Um, and, um, so I got into it. I had it done, the test. I was scared, um, because originally they had written down cardioversion on top of the, the trans thoracic echocardiogram. So, I thought originally they were going to do a cardio version on me, um, but luckily I didn't need it because I had normal sinus rhythm. Um, my heart rate was in the 90s, and they do the cardio version typically with people that have a heart rate of over 150, I would say. I would say like people that have like 170. Maybe even 200. I, I don't know. I'm not really smart when it comes to that, but um, so um, it showed it, that I have an aneurysm. It's called the left septal aneurysm um, that they found, and it's right in the left upper chamber of my heart. Same area where the defect is, where the um, and the defect I'm talking about is the left atrium append uh, appendage, which is uh, a pocket. Um, it's kind of hard to describe unless you look it up, but um, so 
what they were worried about, why, why they did the trans thoracic echocardiogram was they were checking for a thrombosis, like a blood clot. And luckily, I, um, there is no th thrombosis sh shown. The blood was moving um, at a slow pace, um, but it is something that they are wanting to monitor, um, especially this new finding of an aneurysm in my septum. Um, in the left chamber, um, and so I also was diagnosed, uh, which I didn't know, but apparently when I was born, um, I guess I was born with a PFO, um, which is, so it's a membrane, it's, it's what separates the the four chambers, like, so there's top chambers and then there's the lower chambers. And then there's a, what separates it is a membrane. And the first six months, I believe it is, to a year after birth, is supposed to close. Well, mine didn't fully close and it left a, a hole. And um, so it showed regurgitation which means, it, uh, and also it showed, uh, so how they described it was a PFO bidirectional um, shunt that is um, where the blood is flowing um, from left to right. Um, so it's going back and forth when the blood is pumping in my heart and that that can cause problems that could cause what I'm experiencing the dizziness lightheadedness the um uh fluttering in, in my chest um but I'm not sure about the chest pain um I know it could cause shortness of breath. Um, I think I've already said that in this video. Um, but they, they want to monitor me for the, for the rest of my life. Um, so I apparently have um, not the uh, regular Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. I have the va va vascular Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, which uh, um, puts me at risk for uh, aortic dissection, I think it's called. It's where the aorta ruptures into the pericardium, which is like a, uh, a protective uh, sac, I guess you could say, that or covering that protects your heart. And when you have one of those, when it ruptures, you die. Unfortunately, and that's if it's not caught on time. Like some people have survived. It's rare, but some people have survived. Um, the chances are low. Same goes with the aneurysm. Um, they want to. So every single year, um, they want to monitor to see if there is growth um, at the aortic root. Um, now, um, that includes the aneurysm. Um, by what I was told is that right now it's, it's a small aneurysm. Um, what they are hoping for is a year from now when they do a repeat test, I'm assuming the same test, um, which would be the, the, where they stick the scope down my, my throat, um, it will show the same. I'm hoping and praying that it doesn't get bigger. Um, they did t warn me though that if my symptoms worsen at any time to let them know. Because sometimes with people with what I have um, with my heart and stuff going on, they have to have surgery to correct it. Um, to remove the aneurysm. Uh, they were talking about um, 
now this is before they they placed me on low low certain i forgot to mention that um they, they placed me on so two weeks after getting increased from the amlodipine they put me on low certain potassium uh 25 milligrams and um which is a low dose um and i noticed that it helped a lot with my blood pressure um and um so yeah um i develop every year and i'm scared i'm young um i unfortunately do do smoke cigarettes i have cut down a tremendous amount um i'm smoking less than a quarter i'm trying to cut down even more eventually my goal is to fully quit but it's it's kind of hard i'm not gonna lie um and uh yeah um i'm still in palliative care um before i had all these tests uh with the heart and the brain which i'm gonna get into next um my palliative care doctor was actually talking about hospice depending on the results and um and what the future you know brings i mean if i get worse then i will have to go into hospice um i'm not looking to end my fight i'm willing to fight this illness now i don't know if you guys know this but i'm an only child i'm a miracle child um because my mom had it hard. She lost her first baby due to being underdiagnosed with a cervix problem. And um, I guess her pelvis is too small, but um, she had my brother, which would, would have been my the first baby, um, but his uh, she delivered him when she was 23 weeks along and he only lived an hour and 52 minutes and um because uh so he was fully developed from the outside but um his lungs i guess are the last to develop on a baby when it comes it and the heart and a couple other things but um the when they did the autopsy they said the reason why he passed away was his lungs were not fully developed like the branches um so yeah he passed away it was unexpected um uh, my mom was not even expecting to go into labor at 23 weeks pregnant um and then she had she would go on to have two miscarriages before um conceiving me um and i was born in 19 uh june 19th of 1992 um, now, from her weak cervix, she had to be bedridden, she had to be, uh, have her cervix sewn shut, um, with sutures, uh, after, the, what, what, once she reached the third month of pregnancy, um, otherwise her cervix would just dilate and it would be a repeat cycle of what happened to them which is devastating um and it still affects them to this day um but back to my story um so i made it to eight months uh inside my mom's belly the doctor actually had tears in his eyes because he was not expecting this he actually advised my mom to adopt or consider other options considering the risk that she was putting herself in. I mean, it wasn't just the baby, but she was also also putting herself at risk. Um, and I forgot why. Um, but yeah, I came, I, and I was a miracle child. I was born with low muscle tone. Um, I uh, hit a little bit of jaundice. Um, and... Um, but not enough to be under the lights. 
and they uh the first year of my life was like hell my mom said because they originally thought that I had hydrocephalus but come to find out <laughs> I had my dad's head uh forehead um so that's a good thing <laughs> um but yeah I'm I'm very lucky to be here I'm I'm the surgeon I thank God for that um and, um, so I want to talk to you guys about my neurology appointment when it comes to, uh, the nerve pain that I've been experiencing even to this day. I experienced it, but it's died down a lot since being started on, uh, Meloxicam. It has helped tremendously, but there are times where, um, I still feel pain, but not as much. Um... Now, I was referred to the neurologist by my primary care physician, um, because, well, and also by, um, the heart people, um, because they wanted to check for myelopathy in me, um, and also do a repeat of scan of my brain. Now, back in 2011, I did have a scan of my brain it showed um mild cerebral atrophy and a couple of other things so it's volume loss it's like what older people get like where your brain shrinks as you age um so back on january 22nd of this year 2024 um i had not my second MRI of my brain and I was expecting to hear good news um and apparently um my brain has gotten worse um there's a lot a lot of shrinkage the doctor or radiologist note takes this in the radiology report um and it says that it doesn't match with my age that's how shrunken it is and on my gofundme if you go on there if you want to take a look at it you can actually see how bad it is um i still have to pull up the 2011 photos um I'm going to probably have to request them or go see if they're on the portal. See, I, I went to Borgenite Imaging. Um, I don't know if you guys have that where you guys are, but um, that's where I go. Uh, if I need any, like, x-rays or anything. Um, or I go to the hospital. Um, now, my heart doctor is out of Rochester General. Um... My neurologist is out of Rochester General in Unity. Um, and he just told me, he's like, why did you wait 13 years to get your brain rechecked? Um, because the scan shows that it has progressed your uh, cerebral atrophy. Um, to the extent that it doesn't uh, match with my age. It's not something that he likes to see can, with someone my age. Um, you know, I'm at risk for dementia at a young age. Um, so far, I mean, I'm okay. I mean, I do have my days where I'm kind of like out of it, like foggy, I guess you could say. Uh, with my brain, um, where my mind will go blank sometimes, um, you know, after having so many testing, oh, and that, that's the other thing, he ordered a whole bunch of blood work, checking me for, like, Lyme disease and all different kinds of things, um, and all of it came back normal, like, like the blood tests, thankfully, um, 
I mean, there was a couple things that was off, but nothing concerning. Um, and then he wanted to have me have a EMG nerve conduction study test where they kind of like send electrical pulses in your wrist and in your hand and they, they, they do it in your feet, legs. Um, and then on top of that, after they do that, they have to stick, uh, it's the size of like acupuncture needles. Now I've never had acupuncture, but like what he told me, these are the same size as acupuncture needles. Now they stick one like right, right up, a, up, a, right by your shoulder bone or collarbone. They stick one there, then they stick one like right here in the middle, and then they stick one right here. And then as for the leg, um, they stick one in your, um, on the side of your ankle, and then they stick one like near your, like I think it's on the knee or near the knee. I forgot. Um, and then, yeah. If your leg does a certain move, like, cause he, I, I was worried about a, uh, ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease. Um, it, it doesn't run in my family, but it's just something that I'm scared of. I'm also scared of like MS or MD, stuff like that. Like the big major things. Um, now, um, what was I talking about? So my, my brain does show a lot of shrinkage. Uh, so like in the, in the back part of, of, of my head, there's like a separation, like, and there's like a lot of like white patchy patches and there's like these black little tiny holes in my, scattered th th throughout my, my brain. Um, and, um, so, I'm just, uh, not liking what I see in the imaging. I mean, I, because I was able to, to look at the images, because I signed up for the Borgenide Imaging Portal, and you could also look at your report. So, um, of course, I didn't understand anything, what I was looking at or anything, but I could just tell. I mean, I'm not a doctor, but I could tell it. It didn't look right because I looked up what you know like a normal person's brain versus mine and mine looks really really bad um he's thinking it's cerebral palsy and I'm like <coughs> um <coughs> excuse me sorry um how could that be possible when my mom was not told at birth. I mean, Social Security diagnosed me back then, um, but, you know, I don't know if it's true, like, uh, but I guess it, that's what he believes, and that I also have a demyelating disease, um, so he's, he's worried about me, he's worried about my my memory, co cogn cognition, cognitive memory, I think it's called. Um, uh, just please uh, keep me in, in your prayers, guys. Um, if you are watching this this long, I really appreciate it. It means a lot to me. Um, and consider subscribing. Um, I really want to start posting more, but the last couple videos that I posted before didn't get hardly any views, and I got no comments, and, um, like, I'm new to this whole YouTube thing. I'm used to only watching videos, not, like, making content, but I'm gonna try to learn it, um. But I just wanted to give you guys an update. Um, I uh, so um, 
Another test they had done was a sleep study, um, and it did show um, a couple things, but uh, I haven't seen the doctor yet for the follow-up, because I had to follow up with the doctor um, to get the results, but based off looking at the results, it looks okay. Um, they said it doesn't meet the threshold for sleep apnea which I'm hoping that I don't have sleep apnea on, um, but what I didn't like is that it mentioned that my oxygen level dropped to 89%. Uh, now, I guess when you're sleeping, the normal is between 90 and 95 when you're sleeping. And apparently I moved in my sleep and snore the entire time. But they might have to repeat the test because um, I wasn't able to get like a deep sleep so that they could check the REM sleep part of it. So my guess would be is that I have to have another repeat test, which means I have to go back, stay another night, which is really, really difficult. I originally wanted them to do an at-home sleep study um, so that... I could possibly wear it for like a week or something at home, the equipment, um, but I don't know. <laughs> um, but yeah, I do have a GoFundMe. Um, my dream is to start a family. Um, I've always wanted kids. I've always wanted to give my mom grandchildren, um, whether that's through a surrogate or adoption, um, with everything that's going on, I'm still thinking about having children. It's like I haven't given up, um, hope. Um, I'm trying, I mean, I'm trying my best, um, to think about other things. Um, I've always dreamed about owning a house, um, Having my own car, getting my license, which I seem not to pass my road tests, um, because I always get nervous when I go for the road tests. Um, but I drive really, really good. Um, and I know I've had my permit since I was 16 and just kept on renewing it. And I've only taken like five road tests and failed all of them. So, um, yeah. But I think it's part of my uh, memory issues. Um, also plays with it, like the comprehension part of it. Like I can't even read a book without having to read it three times. Um, that's why I have to get help when I write things because I'm not good at grammar whatsoever. Um, so, like, I'll speak into the phone and then have it, like, edit it, basically, with the grammar, um, because I'm not good at that. Um, I did have a learning disability. I wasn't classified as special ed, even though I was in special education, but I was mostly in normal classes. I wasn't like the other kids where they were in one classroom all day long. Um, I went to regular classrooms. It's just that there was a teacher assistant in the room um, if I needed help. I was considered other health impaired. And what I've noticed since I've been out of school um, is that I forgot everything I learned just about. Um, but I try to keep my memory sharp. I mean, I read it a lot online, even though it takes me a while to understand what I'm reading. See, if I would have been diagnosed, like I have been most recently, like with the EDD, um, I don't have the hyper one, but I have the in inattentive type. Um, I think I would have done a lot better in school um, and maybe graduated school, um, but, it's for another video. Um, 
yeah, my parents got scammed and out of money, and, um, my grandmother re refused to let me, uh, use her address so that I could finish my last year of school, so I wasn't able to graduate high school. Anyways, um, take care guys, um, and, um, I will keep you guys up to date and look forward to it. Uh, please like, share, subscribe. Please send my GoFundMe link if you can't donate. It's fine. Just please, I ask that you share it. Um, it would mean a lot to me. Um, thank you.